Yeah, I'll take some love. Good to see you, man. If you see someone new next to you, give them some love. If uh, if you're new here and you've got never had a visitor card, hi, honey. If you're new here and you've never gotten a visitor card, if you raise your hand, you could just put it in the offering. It'd be really easy. Is there anyone new that didn't already get a visitor card? Most likely you already got one, but there's. This is just for information. If we're having special events, we'll occasionally, 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 very rarely put out put out uh, information that can help you know about the events coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Chasey said, "There's a good word. Don't don't leave." <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to condense, but you know if that's all the Lord, you know if the Lord maybe He'll say between now and then to get back into worship. I don't know. I think it's important to be sensitive. Can we turn it down just a hair in the house? Not that much. So uh, look at how talkative. That's how drunk people are. You can't get them to shut up. <laughs> Yeah, well, you guys have a good time. It's important to have a good time. Come on, the world's constantly trying to bring you down. The world's constantly in the state to try to come against you. But you know, one place we should be able to have freedom and have joy and have a good time is in the house of the Lord. Amen? Yeah, well, we love it. We love what God's doing. We're uh, ridiculously flabbergasted at the goodness of the Lord. There's no explanation to this flabbergaston. It's flabbergasted. See? That's the face I feel. Oh, wow. Shabba. <laughs> Is anybody in here interested in going to Voice of the Apostles? We usually have about 40 people. There's a sign she wear. All right, well, Terry, and where, where's Angie? Okay, wherever they are, see them. There's Angie, and there's Terry. See them? No, it's, too, it's, still, it's still far enough out, but listen, it costs money, so you really need to start saving. Um, it's not a lot, in my opinion, but some people think $10 is a lot. It's on the table, sign up. But the main thing is that, that we want we want you to be able to plan for it so you have time and you can, there's a place that's not that expensive. It's about 80 bucks a night. And if you split it with four people, that's pretty reasonable. And it's right at the top of the hill so you can just walk right down. So anyway, we'll be, uh, we'll be getting more and more information as we go about that, but I'm very excited about it. Cause today reminded me of a crazy conference. <laughs> this is the goodness of the Lord, eh? Eh? This is my beloved, with whom I'm so pleased. of affirmation for those that need to know. Please learn that. It's so embarrassing. Or physical touch. I do like to hug them. I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I hug everybody when I'm really drunk. <laughs> so, um, no, the only reason I came up here, honey, was um, Darlene said, who does she pay for VOA? Because there are some people that would like to pay today. So um, if you are ready to pay today for VOA, please see Terry. Where is Terry? Terry, you and Angie are going to work together because you both came and asked about it. Um, you had asked my husband, she had came to me, I didn't know and he didn't know. So we're going to put you guys together as a team, please. And
p.m. and 7 p.m. We're going to have a uh, pastor Phil from the Ark and Alabama is going to be here. And he's going to be teaching on some leadership, supernatural, um, and prophetic. We're not sure how it's all going to come in, but he teaches on all that. He also, uh, just to give a little bit of background, he's very good friends with Beth Heflin, and he was traveling. He was at Emmanuel's with him this weekend. Um, and Lee? He does the School He does the Bethel School of Supernatural. So that's going to be a really exciting weekend. I, I put these together so people cannot forget, please. Uh, we want everyone to be poured into, uh, and I want to be poured into. Um, so the following week, September 16th, my husband's going to have a special word. And then the following week after that is the Women's Conference. That's September 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. And those that need a flyer for the Women's Conference, can someone pass these out, please? They have the dates on them now. So if anybody needs one, um, Tracy Lucy is going to be the guest speaker for that. But there are several other women that are going to be speaking for the Women's Conference. Some of the titles are going to be on identity. Some are going to be on being a deep well. Like us women, I think sometimes we struggle with doubting ourselves. Doubting ourselves that we cannot handle things. And that is a lie that needs to get broke. And I am praying that this women's conference is going to put such a boldness in you through the Deep Well message and ask, seek, and knock your inheritance. That's another title. Um, and then the following weekend, which is September 29th and 30th, Dr. James Maloney is going to be back with us. keep a reminder in front of them. I'm the kind of person, I gotta have reminders in front of me. Okay, and then uh, where is Pat? Is Pat feeling better? Pat, are you feeling better? Come on up. Come on up here. And Mike, you got your thing next Sunday, don't forget. Mr. Goatee, do not forget next Sunday. <laughs> Okay, this is Pat, and this is his first day at Redemption House. <laughs> um, we had planned for him to come today and share a testimony, and when he got here, he got a really bad headache that caused him to start vomiting. And, you know, when a headache comes on you like that, like sometimes people can naturally struggle with headaches, and I understand that, okay? But generally, that's like a spirit of control that's trying to control him. And, and it was the spirit that was opposite and opposing God and did not want him to give his testimony today. So we prayed with him. He's not bombing anymore, and his headache is still there a little bit, but it's going away. So I, that's right. That's right. And I said, the word of your testimony is going to still go Today, and as soon as you give it, your headache is going to be completely gone. Yeah. Well, she said, I'm uh, Pat. I'm the cousin of uh, Carly uh, over there. Uh, I just moved in, just moved uh, uh, into her house uh, about two days ago. Um, but let's uh, rewind all the way back. Actually, if you want my bound your heads. Dear Lord, uh, thank you for this day. Thank you for um, uh, the healing you placed upon me. Thank you for not uh, allowing the devil to uh, have his way this morning and keep my mouth shut, Lord God. Um, please, uh, please allow me to, uh, please allow the Spirit to speak through me, Lord, uh, and say what I need to say. And uh, uh, please let anybody here uh, cultivate their mind and uh, allow them to receive. Anything similar, uh, just to know that they can get going to your name, my brother, God, amen. Um, uh, well, let's just start at the beginning. Um, I, uh, I had a good life. Um, wasn't really uh, denied anything. Um, but um, when my parents, uh, my parents were together, they split up at uh, uh, when I was three years old, um, and it was something 
at, for some reason at that age, I can recall that. I was sitting up at the front, at the top of the steps with my sister, um, watching them fight. Um, nothing physical. Uh, but for some reason, I thought I caused it. I uh, don't know psychologically why that is, but I thought it was something I did. Uh, a year later, there was a guy that lived next door, Richie. Uh, he used to come over here, he used to watch us. Um, the first person I began to trust uh, outside my family. And um, for some reason, he took it upon himself and uh, molested me. And then uh, a year later, with all these uh, weird <coughs> confusion, uh, everything else, I had my first sexual experience with uh, a girl a few uh, years older down the street. So, um, growing up, I had a lot of, uh, I, I learned to distrust before I learned to trust. I learned to, um, uh, I learned to hate uh, before I learned to love. Uh, so I was confused about a lot of things. I didn't know um, how to act. I didn't really know how to talk to people. I knew how to uh, withdraw from a lot of situations um, emotionally. Um, so growing up was uh, was kind of tough. My family tried to get me help, um, but I didn't want to talk about it. I refused. If a problem, if I didn't talk about it, the problem wasn't there. Um, so um, by the we, we lived with my mom, and I became codependent. I guess with that. She was my rock, and um, she had her own separate demons to deal with, and uh, by the age of seven, we were taken um, from my mom's house and placed, um, uh, placed at my father's house, and um, for some reason, I thought it was something I caused again. Um, I thought, uh, you know, one woman in this world, uh, one person that uh, who I loved who didn't want me, um, and, and it sucked because I, I didn't know why. I, you know, I figured it was it was um, uh, oh closer. Sorry, <laughs> um, I didn't I didn't understand why. I thought it was something I caused something I guess um, with I was damaged goods quote unquote, for what happened to me. Um, I thought, uh, I, I just thought all these things. Um, and uh, so from then on, I, I kind of felt as if, uh, okay, well, I'll play the role. I'll play this, uh, I'll play this, uh, this rejected, uh, nobody wants, you know, I'll, I'll play that role. So, at my father's house, I uh, I did as much as I could to uh, to act out uh, because uh, my mom would come. Uh, sorry, this is, uh, my mom would uh, every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and every other weekend. Uh, she would. Uh, she was supposed to come pick us up. And uh, there were times where I would sit there and, uh, and the cars would never come down. And it sounds uh, so weird. Uh, I don't even know where it's coming from. But uh, it, it hurt. Uh, you know, because she. Why, would, why didn't she like her love? You know, she did. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to paint a uh, horrible picture of my mom, but, uh, but it hurt. It hurt. Uh, so I grew up with that. Uh, acting out. I grew up uh, not understanding why. I hated a lot of things, but I did. So in my father's house, I didn't make it a stable house. Um, 
I did as much as I could to cause uh, as much pain uh, that, that I felt. Because I, I didn't understand. I didn't know how to react. My dad tried to get me counseling, uh, but I wouldn't talk. I, I didn't want to talk. The only thing I wanted is uh, the only thing I wanted to do was live with my mother. And uh, she was an alcoholic. Uh, and she had things to be with uh, that she uh, that she, she never uh, had dealt with, and she was dealing with things the same way I was. Um, so uh, years went by like that uh, until I got to about uh, high school, uh, ninth grade. Uh, start smoking. Start smoking. Uh, that's what it started off as. Um, I actually did it with my sister, my older sister. Um, and that wasn't really, uh, uh, it wasn't really what set it off. Uh, I started drinking uh, my sophomore year. And that, that, uh, that I couldn't understand why people didn't do it every day because uh, I felt, I felt normal. I felt, uh, like I was whole uh, when I would drink because I would become, I would get out of myself, I would get out of this, this disgusting shell I was in all the time because uh, I was so disconnected from people. Uh, and it felt good, I, people liked me, you know, people would laugh at things I said at parties. Uh, and it felt, it, it, would, it felt good. Uh, so um, it went on a couple years like that. Uh, didn't uh, finally cause as much uh, by my sophomore year, uh, I mean my junior year. My, um, my father, I kept running away uh, to my mom's house. Uh, my father said I was causing too much, uh, uh, too much dissension, too much uh, aggravation uh, in our house. And um, uh, he, he wanted me to move with my mom, so I did. And I said, finally, you know, throughout all these years, I, I finally, finally get what I want. And, uh, oh, and, and this is a major part, I'm sorry, I forgot to even uh, all that notion at first sort of uh, threw me off. Uh, when I was about, uh, uh, when I was about eight years old, uh, I remember, Going to church with my father because he's very religious. Um, going to church, uh, it was Baptist church, and uh, I remember clear as day that I'm saying that even in your roughest times, um, God was next to you, God was with you. Um, and hearing that, uh, you know, brought up, you know, if I was that young, being molested, uh, you know, while my whole things with my mom not being there, if, if he was there the whole time and didn't do anything, what kind of God is that? And I, and I hated him from that moment on. Uh, I hated him. Uh, I hated him for making me the way I was. I hated him for not saving me. Uh, I hated him. Uh, I hated him for everything. And then, uh, and then my father being as religious as he is, my hatred also turned to him because why would he, how could you love this thing you call God uh, while he just watched your son uh, while all these things were up going on? Um, so that's what that's what a lot of my hatred came from. It took us to church, and I always called uh, always caused trouble in church. So back to uh, I'm living with my mom now, and uh, we uh, I go to school in uh, Bel Air. It's my uh, senior year. Uh, start experimenting with uh, pain pills, and that's when it really went off. That's what uh, that's what really numbed uh, everything. So the next few years were filled with uh, uh, 
party, basically, they were filled with any way I can, uh, I can just, because it, existing at this point, I had no drive, uh, I had no want to do anything. Uh, oh, how to end up into challenge. Oh, but that's, uh, uh, I, I've been there five times, uh, from about age, about age 18 to 25, uh, it was filled with, uh, uh, all filled with drugs, all filled with different types of rehabs, uh, in the team challenge, five separate, uh, five separate occasions. Uh, my whole thing is, uh, I run. If I, uh, if I come up against opposition, I run from it because, uh, because if I'm not there, the problem's not there. Um, and uh, so, so that, 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 was, that was my whole theory. Um, I used to house hop all of the time. Car hardly knows from where. Um, I'm known, I, I never stayed at one place, uh, hardly ever. Um, but this, this, I just came from a facility called Team Challenge, which is a uh, Christian uh, based, faith based rehab. Uh, and, uh, the Lord gave me, uh, I mean, because my whole track record uh, can show that, that on my own, um, I could do nothing. Uh, I tried every program. I tried, uh, I tried everything. Relationships, horrible, screwed up all my relationships. Burned every bridge. Uh, I have a handful of actual real friends. Um, you know, thank God I got blessed with the family I did because uh, uh, by any other standards, uh, I should be, you know, skimmed alive, and, uh, hung out to dry. And uh, uh, God gave me something that I, I could never, um, I get back. He, he gave me grace. He gave me mercy. He, um, I mean, along with, I could never stand up uh, in front of people and cry. When I was younger, I used to uh, stand in front of the mirror, a weird uh, psychology thing, and force myself not to cry. And the fact that I could stand up in front of all you guys and cry is a gift of itself. And tears of joy, you know. Things, uh, tears I've never had before. And um, so, going through this process of team challenge, God uh, has uh, completely turned my heart around. You know, like, I mean, to loving Him, giving me the gift actually to love Him and come to Him. And the, uh, I forget, I'm sure what verse it is, but the, but the, but Satan was meant for evil. You will turn them off for good. Yes, and, uh, yes. and give me a passion yes. to, uh, to want to reach out to young children. That's how. That I were at one point going through all these things and not having anyone to talk to. And, uh, yeah. I just want to pray over you. If you guys could just, just raise your hands this way. And also, I feel like there was, there was some people in this room when you first started with the divorce thing that, that divorce has caused a lot of confusion in your life. And we just ask right now that the Holy Spirit, as we pray for Him, He's, He's standing in proxy for things you've gone through in your past. We just release them to the Father. We thank you, Lord. That and one more thing, too, that I was hearing, too, is that um, the no more destinies are going to be able to be taken out. That it's going to be a stop to the destinies that have been trying to be stuffed out. That the Lord is coming in like a flood and like in power. And there are many of you right now from pain and hurt that you're still running. You're still running. Some of you don't want to be on pain pills. Some of you are still taking them. Some of you don't want to smoke marijuana. Some of you don't want to drink. And some of you still are struggling. But what it is, is it's, it's a substance to try to deceive you to run from the pain that's inside of you. Stop running. You cannot keep running from this stuff. You need to take a step forward and say, I'm going to deal with what's inside of me. No matter how humiliating it may be, no matter how embarrassed I may be, I am a child of God, and He is my Father, and He does not want this in my life. And I need to stand with Him in agreement with God only. So Lord, we just bless.
bless him as a son right now. And we thank you that you're a good father. And we thank you, Lord, that you've blown away all deception, Lord. And everyone in this room, Lord, that, that has walked under that darkness, we just release all that darkness. We ask, Lord, that he would even be used mightily, Father. Just order his steps as you promised, God. Send him forth, Lord, to do what you asked of him, Father. We just ask for clarity. We ask, Father, for him to continue to stand firm and not, not run any longer. We thank you, Lord, that in you we, we, we stand strong against the wiles of the enemy. Father, we just bless him. We bless him. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, which wipes away all your past. The only thing your past is a, a weapon against the enemy. And we thank you, Lord, for these things that are going to be used as a weapon in, his, in your hand for, for your glory. And we just thank you for it now, Lord. Receive something from that, Lord. Come on, we break off all condemnation. Amen. Yeah. What a great testimony. See, I can feel myself stirring before give testimonies like that. Like I said, oh, 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 oh. give me a um um what what yeah, what are the things? Like get them. I'll get them for you. I'll get them. Reality. <laughs> um, but we do have Bible studies on Tuesday night. We do have prayer group on Tuesday night. Please all come. Please all come. We have a great time. Um, and then we can release the children in a couple more minutes and also the teenagers in a couple more minutes, please. Um, you got that scripture, Anna? I got to share a little bit of a situation. Um, this past week's been a little bit of a strange week because. Um, it's been a good week, and I've been very peaceful, very peaceful. But it's been weird because, like, four of our main vehicles have broke down. Like, one of our 15-passenger vans, our um, our seven-passenger van, our Nissan, and our Mazda, um, which is a good part of our transportation for the houses and, you know, transporting people back and forth to church. I did make some phone calls to reach out for people today for help to get people here, which I was thankful, very thankful for that help. Um, but it's kind of weird because I'm sitting there, I'm going, okay, I don't understand why we're having a little bit of situations with all these vehicles at one time. You know, I can, you know, I can handle, and I keep thinking about the women's conference, how he keeps speaking to me about women and how we're so empowered to handle things. <laughs> okay, I can handle this. And I am. <laughs> it's been good. So they're all sitting in the yard. scripture for tithes and offering today, see? So he used it for something in my life. <laughs> um, he who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and the Lord will reward him for what he has done. So that is the scripture that I want to give everybody today, that whenever the Lord leads you guys to give, just to remember the scripture. And, and in all ways, we're not poor, we're rich in him by all means. But there are needs on earth that need to be met. So I just wanted you guys to hear a little bit about how he's going to overcome and reward people in your own lives. That it has nothing to do with any one of us, but it has all to do with him. So if everybody would please pray about what you already give today, I would really appreciate that. And then Anna, we could have some tithe music. I don't, it's so hard, you know, like when the spirit's moving and you got to transition into this. It just like feels crazy sometimes. <laughs> but, yes. yes. Music, Anna. 